I would think it would be a storyline that a few people might be trying out, uh, might subscribe to it that didn't subscribe to the series. Sure. But the idea of having to sell an additional 10 or 12 copies of the A cover before we can even reach a returnable threshold is insulting to me. In the Midwest, you know the best is there waiting. So come and join the conversation. Highs to approve, fan and artist and creator too. What? This is how the challenge is too. From Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, this is Contest of Challengers. The lowest of all entertainment. A comics industry business podcast with the scummiest of the scum, the lowest of the low, the stinkiest of the stinky. Well, hello, Dale. Dale Bush. And Prince Pretty, Patrick Brower. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Excuse me, I got something in my throat. I'm also congested, so yeah, I get it. I, I know what you're going through. Uh, Dal, this is the Christmas episode of Contest of Challengers, a comics industry business podcast from Challengers Comics and Conversation in Chicago, specifically because it technically it goes up on Christmas Day. Sure. Even or, though it'll, or Christmas Eve yeah. for some folks, which again, yeah. Christmas is right in the name. That's true. And uh, what is it you had just said to me before I press record? I don't remember. <laughs> I already forgot. Oh, uh, that, that you should not call Santa Claus a dipshit right before Christmas. <laughs> I think that's sound advice. <laughs> I think it's just it's just good advice in general. In general, yeah. For anyone out there. Yes. Uh, we're not giving any context to that, uh-huh. but there was definitely a deliberate reason that Del da- chose to say that uh, at this yeah, time. Yeah, because Patrick called Santa Claus a dipshit. And I chided him. Not to do that in such close proximity to Christmas. Yes, but you just said I shouldn't do it in general. No, no, people in general shouldn't. Okay. You specifically screwed up. Not the first time. I mean, you can do it on December 26th. At that point, he's probably going to forget. He's not known for remembering things or watching people too closely. I have filled this month with uh, Christmas movies. You know, when I when I work out, I need a good thing to watch to distract uh, me from my But cardio. at the same time, a mindless thing. Something you don't have to, yeah. like, concentrate on too closely. Which is why, Ergo, hands, reach hands down, <laughs> Supernatural is the uh, best thing I ever did for workouts because it gave me, like, a full year worth of workouts because yeah. it was 15 seasons. Yeah. Uh, I watched a Disney movie called The Naughty Nine, and it was about okay. uh, eight, seven, seven kids who were, uh, who didn't get gifts from Santa. Uh-huh. Because they figured out they're on the naughty list, so they they realize that not because of poverty, no, or like no. inattentive parents, or like no, literally parents gave them gifts. Okay, San- Santa didn't Santa did anything. not give them a gift. Okay. Like other members of their household got a gift from Santa, they didn't. Okay, and it's because one of them has hacked into the naughty list and found out they're all on the naughty list. Oh, so let me change that number again. It's six now. Uh, so they decide to. Rob the North Pole because they realize all those gifts that the things they wanted are still there. Sure. So it's a kid heist movie. So Santa does like fulfill the list. He just doesn't then give them the gifts, right? Because they're they've they're naughty. Yes. Okay. And they uh, they go. It's a high, it's a kid heist movie. They go break yeah. into the North Pole to to get sure. the stuff. Uh, I say it's called the Naughty Nine, but and then I said I kept changing the number of yeah. the kids because well one's an adult, so he's not a kid. Okay. Is it like a celebrity actor no. who plays the... No, no. really? And um, it's just, it's the pilot they need to fly to the North Pole. Okay. So they didn't like stunt cast like, oh, and Paul Rudd plays like the, the, pilot? the one grown up or whatever. No, they stunt casted Santa, but that, we're not talking about that. Okay. And Santa only has one short scene, so okay. it doesn't even matter that it's Danny Glover. Uh, and I, I forgot what I brought this up. Um... Because you, you watch Christmas movies, because... Yeah, no, but I mean, there was a reason I was talking about this one. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's after Christmas, because they, they do it after Christmas. Yeah, because they've realized yeah. they haven't gotten yeah. their Santa gift. In this world where gift-giving is still something that everyone does for each other, but also Santa gives gifts above and beyond. Yeah. Santa always gives extra Which gifts is in my house. quite a premise. Um, we are... So you saw that I added uh, Axwilder John to the website. Uh, yes. Axwilder John is a Nick Patera written and drawn. I also uh, created a writer Nick Patera tag. 
Very cool. Because he, he's also artist, Nick Patera. Technically, one should already be in the system for um, Ghost Cage, but I guess we got that in maybe before. Maybe. Because writer Nick Patera is a, is existed previously. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, artist. Artist Nick Patera existed. Right. Writer did not. Interesting. Okay. So I thought uh, he, he wrote Ghost Cage as well, but again, maybe that predates us having managed comics. Maybe. So anyway, um, that'll, whenever it ships, that'll be, that is a, uh, uh, Zoop, which is Kickstarter, but for, you know, comics yeah, and another things. another crowdfunding website. Yeah, which we've used before. Also, what, so I was trying to find out, and I'm getting off topic dramatically, but this is comics related, unlike Christmas movies. So we funded this back in, uh, early, like spring 2022. Okay. Uh, it's coming out now. It's an oversized magazine size Re- hardcover. Releasing in December of 2023. Yes. Uh, it's on its way, so we'll pa- have it most likely next week. Okay. And our copies will be signed. Neat. Um, and, and we did Zoop stuff before. We did a, a, a Love Money Love Money Mr. Hell book from Zoop. Mm-hmm. We did that Winterman collection. We did the Winterman collection. We have the upcoming Conan Artist Edition. Uh, but we also did one that, for the life of me, I cannot tell if ever filled. <laughs> and it was also uh, 20, early 2022. And it was a single issue... Um, I can't, maybe a Mexican wrestling comic? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but I don't think we ever got yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it filled. I don't remember. But also, I couldn't even find the, uh, when the money was credited. There's a weird thing on Zoop. When you go to any project you've funded, they all say, charged November 2023. They're all charged when the campaign ends. Right. So, we That's paid typical. for this Nick Patera book back in, uh, you know, mid-2022. Sure. But the, everything had said, like, oh, as of November 23rd, <coughs> 2023, you, you've you paid. Yeah. Like, for every campaign. Interesting. Because I needed to go back and figure, wait, what did we pay for these Nick Pat- for these Axwell or John books with uh, shipping and individual pledging and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, so I was, I put a draft item up on our website, so when we get it in, we just... Make sure all the barcode information is right, and, and then activate it. Active. So it's already up there and, and can be can be yep. live, and Easy we can pieces. add a new release tag and all that stuff. Yeah. But I was I brought that up. Mm-hmm. Because, I'm gonna write that down. Axel and John. Ax dash. Ax. Wilder dash. It fits. Oh okay. Cash Wheeler. Yep. Dax Wilder. One of them's name is Wilder somewhere. Well, Dax, Dax Harwood Cash and, Wheeler. But previous to yeah. this but i brought that up because there's another item that i'm a i wanted to start adding to the website but it cannot go live until after christmas and so we'll talk yes. about it next week and i've sure. alluded to it before but yeah i was going to drop it in just now but then i got distracted by doing actual or john but you know what i got distracted by most of today what's that patrick correcting a huge mistake that i made yesterday <laughs> One that uh, you didn't catch during the day because you've been sick. Yeah. Sounds like you caught it now, though. Uh, I saw an email about it. Oh, just now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had, had already... Uh, Molly's response to that email was one I'd already written and sent into her and said, please put this in tomorrow's email. Uh-huh. Uh, a couple weeks ago, when making the weekly email, I forgot to change out the actual books that were shipping for the week. Now, Wednesday afternoons, we get Diamond's invoices <laughs> for the upcoming week. The The Thursday before that is when we get PRH and Lunar. Yep. So I already have those. Thursdays, I break down PRH and Lunar and separate everything from Diamond and Image. I'm sorry. Yeah, not Diamond. From Marvel and Image and Dark Horse and PRH and IDW. Mm-hmm. And then on the following Wednesdays, when I could do... Diamond stuff, which is Boom and Dynamite and whatever right. else, and a bunch of extra manga and whatnot. So I break those lists out and, and put up on the website what's coming out the following week. Every Wednesday, we put up next Wednesday's books. Mm-hmm. Couple of, And then I take that information and I copy it into our email template where I call out individual books that are new, yep. um, have any events that we have at the top, and then everything is broken down by, you know, graphic novels. Uh, all ages and young adult, mm-hmm. manga, Marvel, DC, yeah. Image, Merchandise New everybody Marvel, else. Cetera, yeah. yeah. Well, a couple weeks ago, I forgot to change that, that part of the weekly email. Mm-hmm. 
So it went out with the wrong books. And I'm sure a lot of people noticed. Two different people emailed in about it. Um, but again, the list on the website was correct, so they had access to the information. This time, because it's the end of the year, and everybody is working in advance because all the major publishers and distributors have days, even weeks off. Yeah, and also because of um, the holidays falling on two consecutive Mondays, that's Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Uh, there's a lot of shipments that are going out early to make sure that stores have plenty of time both to receive them to actually be open at a time where, where UPS or FedEx will be dropping things off, but then also have time to check in orders to pull for subscribers to do all that stuff because most stores will be closed at least one of those days, if not both of those days. So what I usually do is when I go to Penguin Random House and I go to the shipment list, I just go, and you can always tell because there's two days in a row. Mm -hmm. The first day is all of the trades. Yeah, books. And the second day is all the single issue comics. Yeah. So I go to the bottom of the list, and there's always two consecutive days. And so I hit those. And I have to download it, and then I have to uh, go through it in Excel, and then I have to import some of it into Word so I can reformat it because everybody's formatting is different yeah. and... Uh, luckily, Lunar does all caps for everything, but PRH doesn't. They do all caps for yeah. Marvel, and then mixed case for everybody else. Yeah, we've complained a lot about the fact that PRH as a distributor doesn't really seem to have any rules about how stuff is listed, so it's up to the individual publishers, and they all have completely different ideas on yeah. how titles should be formatted. So then I have to make sure it's all caps, then I import it to a text field, then I go and edit it, blah, 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 blah. So I did that last Thursday, like I always do, and then... Uh, yesterday, which was Wednesday, Luna was already up for the week, mm -hmm. when normally I have to wait for them on Thursdays. So I did most of that last night, and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'll finish Marvel, because Marvel only had, I'm sorry, PRH only had the trades. I'm like, oh, I'll wait until the morning, they'll have the rest of it. Okay. And they did. And I, and I, I go and I start breaking it down, and, uh, um, what, something, something didn't click right. Something looked off. And I realized, not right away, it took a little bit of understanding, <laughs> that I missed an entire week. There were two other shipments that PRH put out earlier. Yep. So I just go to the bottom of the list, uh -huh. and in doing so, I skipped an entire week. So everything I did last week for uh, next week... Mm -hmm is actually a week further out. Yes. So everything you, you were that... telling people the books are coming out on December 27th when they're actually coming out on January 3rd. Yes. Yes. So books are coming out December 27th, just not everything that I put in the email that went out today. Yeah. Now, rather than start from scratch, I'm like, oh, I can just re-edit this because all of the lunar stuff is right. Mm -hmm. It's just the PRH stuff that's wrong. Right. Well, there's a lot of extra items that come out on those invoices that don't make it into our emails, but you need to have a complete list. You, Dal Bush, do. yes. need to have a complete list, even of stuff that we're not putting on the shelf. Absolutely. But the website doesn't. Yeah. So I couldn't just like, oh, all right, well, I have, a, I have this list for next week. No, I have the website list for next week, not yeah. the full list. So I still had to go back in and figure out every cover and ever had to do all the work over again of who, wait, what's an incentive cover? What is, because all that stuff got uh, copied over, got um, looked past. Yes. So yeah, anybody who got an email from us on Thursday, December 21st, all that stuff is, you're going to see all, all the Marvel stuff again in next week's email. Yeah. But I went, Enjoy. I fixed it on the website. And had to keep fixing it because it's like, wait, you forgot manga. Oh, wait, no, you mentioned those comic boxes. And even yesterday, I'm like, wait, we didn't get those comic boxes in that were on the list. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess they're going to oh, come well. in. I guess they're going to come in in a different, like, they can come in Friday. Sure. You know, they come from a different warehouse or whatever. No, they come in next week. So I wrote a paragraph that said, hey, uh, I'm not prepared for uh, <laughs> distributors to be this ahead of the game. And I missed an entire week. Yep. So 
that email was not wrong, just premature. Here, this link shows you everything. Nice. So December, not the best of months for our... Uh, Finishing 2023 strong. Yeah. Real strong. Next strong. Why should it be... Thank you. Next strong. That's real good. Why should it be any different than the other month we had this year? Right. No, tell me why, please. Oh, why it uh, be oof. Because we want it to be... Here is an update on the where the body was book plates, which we still do not have, yeah. and spoiler alert, don't have for next week either. Yeah, currently uh, scheduled for the week after. Scheduled for the following week, which is again the first week of January. Not holding my breath. Um, I mean, I can't breathe through my nose, but I'm not um, counting on it happening. Yeah. So here's a reason why we never got our. Book plates. Dow, do you want to remind people what the uh, criteria was? So the criteria for the book plates for the Edward Baker Sean Phillips graphic novels has always been um, that for every 20 copies of the hardcover that you order, you are allowed to order one packet of 20 signed and numbered book plates. So if you order 20 copies of Reckless Volume 1, you're allowed to order one packet of 20 signed Reckless Volume 1 book plates. If you order 25 copies of the hardcover... You can still only order twenty copy the one twenty copy pack of book plates. If you order forty, you can get two, sixty, three, and so on. But it has to be in increments of twenty. That was how it was done when it had initially started at uh, Diamond when Diamond was distributing these graphic novels. And that's the way it's always been. Right? Yeah, and that's what carried over to Lunar, and I know Lunar was doing it that way for the Night Fever book plates, which was the previous Brubaker Phillips crime graphic novel that had an included book plate. Uh, for people who ordered increments of 20 copies of the hardcover. So, short math is 20 equals 1. Correct. Well, I was talking to someone who works at a different comic store, and we were discussing that very topic of where the body was, uh, book plates, and it turned out that uh, this particular store ordered significantly less than 20 copies of the book, but still ordered one package of book plates. Mm -hmm. And got all 20 book plates. Yeah, and had it fulfilled. They got they got the little sealed packet Yeah, uh, that we were expecting three of because we ordered 60 copies of the hardcover and got zero and because Lunar had sent out an email basically saying, like, we don't have enough, which seemed weird, but, like, things happen. Maybe they yeah. were damaged in shipment, yeah. whatever. But now it's turning out that maybe the reason they didn't have enough to fill for everybody was because they were giving them away to people who did didn't not qualify. qualify for them. Yeah. So suddenly the expectation of we need X amount of book plates is now we need X amount plus 40. And this store, it's not like they ordered, like, oh, 18 and got a bundle of 20. No, they ordered less than half. Yeah. Of, uh, they, they ordered less than 10, but still got 20 book plates. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not even mad at that store. I mean, while you didn't qualify for them, the responsibility is on the distributor to say you did yeah. not qualify for this. When we are ordering Marvel Comics from PRH, and PRH offers incentive covers... Like, let's say it's a 1 in 25 variant. If we've only ordered 20 copies and we go to say, like, okay, we want one of the 1 in 25 variants, they will flash a little thing saying, no, you're five copies away. Order five more copies or you can't get this book. And it's the same way with Lunar with incentive covers. Yeah. Uh, if you order 24 copies of a, a DC comic, you cannot get the 1 in 25 DC variant. Conversely, when it was just Diamond as a distributor, it was a well-known... Uh, thing in the comics industry that retailers, lots and lots of retailers, would still check off the high-level incentive variants anyway, yeah. just to see what happens. Sure. Just to see if they get them. Yeah, I mean, technically there's no penalty in doing so. All, yeah, all that a, happens is you don't get the thing you didn't qualify Yeah, but you're for. also creating a lot of extra work for the distributor. You are, and... it's true. But with more automated systems, I don't... Again, it's just a programming error of there should have been a thing that stopped people from being able to do Correct. that, and there was not. Now, this re retailer did not do it with any uh, malice. That He did not, they, whoops, they, whomever. Let's just call them Michael Moondog. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean... Uh, Larry, Larry Moondog. Vince Variety. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> keep doing it. So, <laughs> they didn't realize that there was a, you had to order 20. They say that it didn't say anything about it, which pretty sure it did. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, you, I could, I will accept the argument that if it's somebody who hasn't been doing this for a long, long time, sometimes you miss something on Lunar's FOCs. 
sure. if you don't drill into the details, if you're not reading a lot of emails, if you're not following a lot of the publisher uh, PR stuff. Um, and again, this is a situation where it should have been Lunar that said, no, you did not qualify for this. You don't get these. And to be uh, to be fair, this is a, a, a very uh, moral upstanding person and somebody that I, in fact, feel like, oh, you know, retail is in good hands with this person moving mm -hmm. forward. Uh, and they did say, well, we have a ton of extras. Do you need one? <laughs> and it's true. I did buy the book and I do need one. But You're on the no, list. I don't. I don't want one of yours. <laughs> I want one of the ones that I ordered for one, me. One of the 60 that we were expecting to get when we were yeah. at 60 copies of this hardcover. Also, I knowing this store as I do, I was very surprised by the quantity they ordered. Yeah, it's it's a lower number than I would have expected. In fact, this conversation is being told around somebody who used to have the same kind of skin in the game who also said, that's all you ordered? Yeah, it's a little low. Yeah. But, I mean, we were talking about how not fast that book was moving, so... Yeah, we still have a handful <laughs> on the shelf. Maybe they were the smart ones. A, um, Satnam Singh handful. <laughs> a smart Hulk handful. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, hopefully, maybe by this point next week, we'll know. Because we're supposed to be getting everything, everything early. Yeah, like Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Yeah, so much so that Lunar sent out an email saying, hey, you're going to get the books... Before the stuff goes on sale next week, don't put it out. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not uncommon for us to have next week's Lunar books before this week's one sale. Yeah, but, so, I mean, they were also saying that, um, basically, I think we're uh, an earlier point, maybe, in the shipment schedule. Yeah. So, like, the people are, are going to be getting them significantly earlier than they usually do. And that, that because of the industry being the way it is, it is incumbent upon... A distributor to say, hey, dummies, you're going to get this stuff in early. Don't just put it on the shelves and sell it. It's not, it's got a street date. You need to sit on it for like three or four days. Sure. I can't call Santa a dipshit, but Lunar can call all retailers dummies. They mean it affectionately. They don't, but they're also right. They're all, yeah. I mean, and I'm in the wrong here. It's factual, even if it's not polite. I, I, I of course, should never have called Santa a dipshit. No. Uh, Rookie mistake. Oh, my God. <laughs> Patrick wonders why Christmas is always so bad for him. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, no. More kidney stones in my stocking. <laughs> Jesus. Dell, we Patrick. host a lot of events. One or two, it's been told. Uh, in fact, by the time this episode goes up, we will have had two more. Yes. You will uh, have, yes. Yeah. you. Uh, your favorite events are the ones you're not at. Yeah, I know that they're in good hands. I'm so surprised you made it to the Halloween party. That's because you knew I was buying M&M's. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but anyway, we'll have had two events. Uh, one just fell in our lap. It's now being called... Are you ready for this? Ready for it. A squared circle reunion. <gasps> Pizza wontons? I, S'mores wontons? I, I don't think so, because I think the person who's involved in that part of the squared circle will not be... Seems unlikely. Yeah. Not, yeah. not betting on it. Uh, pro wrestler Lisa Marie Varone, uh, Victoria from the WWE... Tara from uh, TNA slash Impact, now TNA again, is doing a one-hour What are they called? Greet. Knockouts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if she was Divas Champion or Women's Champion, but definitely a Women's Champion at one point. And a, a two-time Knockouts Champion and a Knockouts Tag Team Champion. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, anyway, Lisa has been a friend of the stores since the Squared Circle had opened, which was an amazing restaurant over on Ashland and... Uh, Fuller 10, I want to say, and man, not only did we, uh, we went there because it was wrestling themed, but we kept going because the food was amazing and we brought so many creators there and we did, we would always do, uh, post, do you remember? Yeah, we, we used to do post free comic book day at the squared circle, uh, cause we can't do it at Lago because they would always do the, uh, Kentucky Derby parties, which would always have them be too filled, but uh, yeah, I even uh, I had a breakup at the uh, uh, Squared Circle. Did you really? Yeah. Um, but De definitely tell Victoria that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think she knows. I think she knew about it. And I also specifically took uh, Amber Benson there once. So I could be like, hey. Not, you... not the breakup, by the way. Correct. Okay. So I could say, hey, you both played somebody named Tara. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, that was after Free Comic Book Day, and we just had a bunch of pizza, but I didn't have any pizza. And then we get to Squared Circle, 
And Amber's like, why'd you do this? I can't. I just had pizza. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> I'm having these wontons, baby. Oh, so good. Anyway, uh, Lisa Those Marie wontons. is, uh, oh she's, she now lives in like San Francisco or San Diego or something. California? Yeah. But she's back doing a thing this weekend and she wanted to do a quick signing. Uh, it's, we're not, this is not me promoting it because it's already been over. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it's a totally free thing. She's not charging for autographs. She's just there to meet people. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool stuff. for her to think of us yeah. for this. And then on Saturday, my sisters are coming in for a, a gift wrapping session, and, and uh, Karen is a baker, and she's going to be um, not donating, selling, whatever, cookies that you get for donation to the Alzheimer's Association. Sure. Selling. Okay. Selling cookies to raise money for Alzheimer's. The, the gift wrapping is free. You can donate if you want to. Uh, it's going to look suspicious because the donation button, if you have Venmo, is just my Venmo. That's because I'm keeping it all aside until after the first of the year. Then it goes to the Alzheimer's Karen's Alzheimer's page. Because everything resets at the begin- at the start of the year. Oh, okay. So because it's my store and it's weird to have like her personal information available on display. Yeah. I, and since my Venmo, Venmo name is just my name, uh-huh. and it's fine. Anyway... So those will have happened. This is this is a, a long trail for a very tiny Ready for segment. It. So we, we do events yep. often. We have a sale coming up. We have a Lucy Nisley event coming up that yep. we're doing with Lucy Nisley and BFF Bikes. Yep. Um, we have uh, tentative plans with Sage Coffee and mm-hmm. uh, one or two other things percolating. Percolating. We have whatever we used to make uh, after an event, we would do an event wrap up flyer. With photos from the event and a little write up, and we put it in one of our wooden red IKEA frames and hang it over the art table, which is now the supply God, section all the way really? back. <laughs> yeah, we'd go out of the way to make like a whole it's commemorative funny. thing. Yeah, yeah, you started doing it. Oh my God. This is well, long ago. we abandoned that, but what we do now is we kept we keep a flyer from every event, and they, those all go into binders that are inside kicks. Mm-hmm. On a bookshelf and sidekicks. But the first, like, year, two years or whatever, they, they were all recap sheets. Yeah. Okay. But now we just take a flyer. So we still have a record of every event we did. At least ones that we did flyers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even some that we didn't necessarily master use flyers for, we would print up one to put sure. in the book. Yeah. But another way that I would keep track of everything we did as a store, and that includes employee birthdays and all sorts of specific dates, would be... We would get a calendar from Diamond every year that we would just write on like crazy. It would have the different days of like, hey, here's when previous goes on sale. Here's when it's due if you mail it in. Right, here's when it's due copy. where if you send in a uh, um, a disc. <laughs> um, here's the online yeah, closure which, date. Which is the one that we care about right. is the online date. Uh, it would have different convention dates uh-huh. pre-printed in it. It would have... Holidays. Yeah. And uh, also things like, oh, this is uh, Skynet Day or Predator Day or whatever. Right. Little things Jack like Kirby's that. Jack Kirby's birthday. Uh, that stuff it doesn't do. I think they've done it before. Yeah. They, they did like Kirby and Eisner and stuff like um, that. And so I would we would write on those. We would, we would color coordinate like, hey, uh, for this year, circling the day in black means that's when the orders are due. Circling the day in blue means it's an event. If it's an employee birthday, it goes on the uh, lower part of the, the square. But if it, if um, Maurice came to the windows, that goes up higher. Mm-hmm. Things like that, right? If people need days off, that goes above a certain it, Exactly. Point. Yeah. Exactly. And so, <clears throat> and then I always reinforce the holes in these with the cut-up backer boards because, you know, they got to hang for a full year and they're going to tear through. Yeah. So I've saved all of these calendars. Oh, my God. Since, like, they're all in a filing cabinet drawer in the back, uh-huh. and it's a fun thing to occasionally look through, which I have li- admittedly never done, except when I'd be like, when is somebody's birthday? Because you got to transfer the birthdays, right, you know? Right, that's true. And it was a, a good reminder of, of how far we've come. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't have one for 2008 because we opened Midway, in March. Because yeah. the, the, so, the calendars are always distributed by Diamond at the end of, at the, end of the previous year, which is normally when you'd want a calendar for yeah. the next year. Yeah. Well, uh, this year, the calendars were on the invoice for this this week, this previous week of books that showed up on Tuesday when I picked them up. And we were invoiced for one calendar, but we were so lucky. So lucky. We got two. They say good things never happen to challengers. Well, wrong. 
And Diamond has had to make some adjustments and, and still will have to make some adjustments because they don't have as many publishers as they used to. Nope. In fact, um, not so orders were due today for February, which it's a little frustrating to have them due before Christmas. Next year, spoiler, they're due on December 27th. Okay. So you get a day after, two days after Christmas to work on them. But Christmas is on a Wednesday next year. Yeah. It's going to be One. weird. Weird release dates. Yeah. It sounds like new release date is going to be a... Um, Thursday. Yeah, a Stella and Molly Jane problem. I don't... <laughs> I think challenges is going to look very different by, by December of next year. So, the, uh, I forgot. I forgot. What, I, I know where I was going, but I forgot what route I was taking to get there. I'm not lost. I know how to get home. <coughs> I just don't know where I am, which is a thing that happens when I drive often. Uh-oh. We got two copies of the calendar. Oh, uh, okay. What I was going to say. Here's what I was going to say. Ready for it. That the order that I posted at the end of... November were for the entire month about what our current weekly bill is from Diamond. Wow. That's how much less we're ordering. However, the order that I just posted for December was twice that amount. Interesting. Because all the free comic day books are in it. Oh. Uh, and that, we that we really spent like roughly a monthly Diamond bill now yeah, on free comic day books. On free comic books. day books. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so my point is we are ordering less from Diamond, and it shows because the Diamond calendars this year were a one-sheet poster. Yeah, it was like an 11 by 17 sheet of glossy paper folded in half. And you unfold it, and then the bottom half is every month and every day for the year. Yeah. Which means there's no room to write anything. It's no. literally just like the top portion is like a Diamond logo or something, and then the bottom portion is... The months. Everything every day for the year. year. And an extra day because it's a leap year. And, they included uh, a free extra day. They color coded some days to do the hey previews on sales this color previews orders due are this color, yep. that kind of thing. But ultimately, it <clears> is <throat> uh, the end of an era for the diamond calendars, and it made yeah. other retailers go back to be like, how long have we been getting calendars? And somebody, I think, um, I can't remember. I don't. I don't want to say 1988 and be wrong, but somebody like there were some calendars from the 90s that people sure. pulled out and i mean like i get it it's it's a bummer and it um, it was certainly disappointing to find out um in advance that what we'd be getting would would not be as useful to us as in years prior but yeah i mean the dollars and cents of it i i wouldn't give our account for what we're currently spending at diamond an entire free calendar yeah I mean, I I might have bought one if they would have been like, hey, if you want a calendar this year, it's like three bucks. I would have been like, okay, fine. Like to yeah. defray costs, sure. sure I, I would, because I, I, we do. I do find it do, useful. Yeah. 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 And I mean, certainly with, like, I would assume that some of the stuff that defrayed the cost of the Diamond calendar in years past was that each month was sponsored by a different vendor. Yes. And I'm sure Somebody that has to pay for that. And it's, it's like, happening now. well, do you have 12 of those left? <laughs> I don't know how many months Boom is going to buy. You know, I right. don't know how many, how many months Dynamite's going to buy. And everybody else, you're just a wholesaler for, so they are not necessarily going to spend any money promoting, you know, Dark Horse or Marvel or whatever. That's somebody else's it? problem. Titan is getting bumped to the front of the catalog now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think so. Or Dynamite, like, one of the two. No, is Dynamite uh, already Yeah, at the front of the catalog is... I don't order Dynamite. Yeah. So, don't so Titan is getting bumped up. <laughs> Good for them. Good for them as well. Uh, Dow, we just came from a wrestling movie. We did. The Iron Claw. The Iron Claw. Uh, really Claw's up, gonna get you. upbeat, family-friendly. Uh, just, you leave the movie it's about so the, happy. the dream of the Von Erich family and how nothing ever went wrong for them. And speaking of wrestling, there was a, a wrestler, Scott Steiner. Yes. They were the Steiner brothers, but Scott Steiner, when he was in TNA, uh, had a Steiner math promo, and it, Steiner math became a thing. Sure. Where, like, to, to use Paul Rudd from Anchorman, 60% of the time, it works 100% of the time. Yeah, it's like a Yogi Berra sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of math. Yeah. So, uh, in, Taz, uh, commentate, my favorite commentator from AEW... Uh, at one point when he was running Team Taz, as well as commentating on things like Dynamite, uh, he had mentioned that uh, 
two of his guys, uh, absolute Ricky Starks and, and Powerhouse Powerhouse Hobbs. Powderhouse Hobbs, uh, Powderhouse. were competing in a like a six man event. Uh, so two guys in there meant he had like a hundred twenty five percent chance of winning the event, and it was just like, what is happening? How did we get to this number? <laughs> Can you explain it? Uh, there was a uh, a joke that um, Excalibur would frequently do when he and Taz were calling matches Who on Who is dark. Excalibur now? Uh, the masked man. Um, he is another wrestling announcer. But uh, Excalibur would uh, notate, basically, uh, that uh, Taz was a, a graduate of uh, a public school system, PSFTW. Yes. And that was responsible for a lot of his... Um, in uh, in wrestling, more inaccurate. And in has specifically, FTW does not stand for for the win. No, it does not. It meant something else, and it still means it that, still does because there's an FTW champion. Yep. So, in keeping with that, Dal, this Patrick. segment is all you. Uh oh. Do you want to explain the DC Comics Batman Returnability? <sighs> I do. I really do because it made me so upset uh, Monday evening when Dow, I read hold, this email. Wait, what? No. You have been asking, <laughs> nay, begging, begging retailers constantly to give returnability in some capacity to show faith in a property, I, in I, a project, I beg publishers. to let retailers go all in, keep it in wrestling, yep. to support a, a, a book. Yep. And now DC heard you, yep. and they're giving you returnability for the, yep. the month-long... Batman Joker Year One event for February from yep. Batman what one forty one one forty two sure one forty three sure no I don't know those numbers are wrong it's, but... a, it's I think it's one forty two to one forty four but it's it's the three issues shipping in February tell this story um, yeah in almost uh, every way that that I think people listen to this podcast are used to uh, my wish was granted uh, via monkey paw <laughs> um, so DC uh, heard my my pleas. And decided that they would show support for the retail community and and help uh, make a book a bigger success by allowing for returnability. Um, Assuming 142 is the first chapter of Joker Year One. Let's say it is. uh, Basically, the the rule is you have to order 150% of, of 142 as you ordered for 141. And at that point, and that's across all covers, and then 25% of your A covers for the entire three chapters are returnable. So right away, this is bad because this isn't really returnability. This is like a tiered system where you have to jump through a certain hoop to be allowed to get returnability. This is a Ponzi scheme. This is multi-level marketing. Yeah, so to, to break the numbers down without formulas, to just give you strict numbers, let's say you ordered 100 copies of... Batman 141, the A cover. So now across all covers for Batman 142, you need to order 150 copies. Yes. So right there, you're assuming that you are going to be ordering a bunch more copies. And then of this, I think it's 33 of your A covers are returnable. So assuming that you are not ordering 50 copies of other variant covers, which you probably aren't, you can only return 33 copies. So you're you're already probably going to have a bunch more A covers that you have to sell above and beyond what you sold of the previous issue before you can even get to the returnable copies. And while that's it's cool that you can have it for 143 and 144 as well without having to order a certain threshold, you're still probably going to take a loss on 142. It's entirely possible this thing is a huge hit Folks come flying out of nowhere to to grab chapter one of Joker year one. But here's the additional problem. This is not a brand new series that you don't know what you're going to sell on. This is not some huge gamble. This is Batman, which is one of DC's largest books. So you have to order 150% of what you're probably already ordering for DC's biggest book, which means the amount of potential (coughs) new readers out there, it's a pretty small pop. And I'd like to point out that they are currently now in a story that has Joker in it. Yeah, and people... I mean, uh, look, I read the book. I like the book. I like what Chip Zdarsky is doing on the book. It is not selling very well. It uh, is, like, also... It, this, it is trending down for us. This was a, a pretty great Batman-Joker-George uh, Jimenez 
drawn yeah. fight book, oh. and it did not increase in readership. No, uh, DC's hitting kind of a cold streak, which is not cool for us. Um, we definitely need them to be performing a little better, and uh, Batman, Catwoman, Gotham War did not click with people at all. We got a ton of the final chapters sitting around, and probably will be liquidating those very shortly. I keep uh, wanting- Titans Beast World is DOA. Nobody cares. Yeah. I keep wanting to do a, a video about DC Comics for our socials, just because there's so many DC books that hit with me right now that are so good. I'm really enjoying a lot of them. And there's there's books that are doing well in the sense of, like, subscriber copies. Like, we have a lot of subscribers for Batman, Superman, World's Finest. It's just rack copies for a lot of these books are, like, next yeah, to nothing. That's and, one and, of them. And again, that that's, book that's is Batman. so fun. Yeah, it's uh, great. I love it. Cy Spurrier's take on The Flash... I've been reading Flash since the trial of Barry Allen when I was much younger, and it was Carrie Bates and Carmen Infantino. Mm-hmm. That should give you a time frame that it's the 80s. <laughs> yes. Cy Spurrier is doing things with Flash that I've never seen before. It's very cool. And it is literally blowing my mind how fresh the concept of a guy who runs fast can be. Yeah. And honestly, again, it is selling well in the sense of, like, we have more subscribers for that book now than we did a year ago. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's just, it's better than that. Yeah. And I think Green Arrow is great. Yeah. Uh, I'm now really, an ongoing series. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm really enjoying Green Lantern. Green Lantern's great. Wonder uh, Woman's great. Oh my Nightwing. God. Nightwing. Wonder Woman 4 was amazing. Yes. It was so good. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey's like, great. I when is it. the last time you heard me rave about this many DC titles? Yeah. And also core characters. Yeah. But yet at the same time, again, like a lot of their recent bigger swings have not necessarily connected with people. And on top of that, even the books that we're really loving, like like Wonder Woman, a few years ago they might have sold even better than yeah, they're selling right but now. But also, Knight to Terrors really hurt a lot of stuff. It really did. Uh, it killed a lot of momentum on a lot of books. Yeah. And again, for us as, a, as an event, it didn't really sell very well. So it, it certainly didn't make up for what it was costing us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, again, I don't want to harp on it, but holy shit, does no one care about Beast World? They just don't. Correct. Oh my but god. But no, it's one of the three major books Whew. that showcase the future of the DC And universe. luckily, it was a book that was going to be shipping twice monthly, which means that we... Had no chance to cut orders. Yeah, so we ordered the first three with no sales data, assuming that it would at least appeal to the people who were reading Titans. Spoiler, it did not. It doesn't feel like a major DC crossover, which it's supposed to be. No, um... Uh, yeah, I, certainly for us, like, the main series doesn't sell great, and then the one-shots, um, which you had very conservative numbers on, still ended up being still way too way high. Way too high. And, and, look, when I say conservative, I mean eight. Yeah, like, single-digit copies for the shelf. And, honest to God, some of them, we probably should have ordered zero for the shelf, because nobody bought yep. it off the shelf. Nobody cared. Yep. And the next week, there was another one-shot. So, it's, like, it's completely in the rear view for people. Um So, yeah, those are things that are not great. And, again, Batman's a book that uh, subscriber numbers are fine. They're good. It's it's probably our most subscribed to DC book. Oh, yeah. Um, It's probably our our second highest subscription book total. Shelf copies are not really huge. Uh, We talked about it on the podcast a couple, like a month ago. Shelf copies are like four. Yeah, I mean, so there's a chance out there that the Joker year one thing could draw on people who had maybe left the book a while ago. I would be skeptical of that because some of the people who left the book specifically told us it was because of the the writing and the story, which means if it's not a new creative team, I don't know if they're going to be lured back. Uh, some people who are just kind of random Joker fans might check it out. We would order a few more. I would think it would be a storyline that a few people might be trying out, uh, might subscribe to it that didn't subscribe to the series. Sure. But the idea of ha- having to sell an additional 10 or 12 copies of the A cover before we can even reach a returnable threshold is insulting to me because that is while returnability should be something that is the publisher saying, we will meet you halfway on this. We understand that, that we, we have to also take a risk. This is them saying we are taking no risk, like make it worth our while to take a risk. And it's like, that's not the point of returnability. Like, yeah, I, the, the risk that only DC yeah. could make returnability our um, problem. Yeah, well, yeah, like our our risk, not theirs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, incredibly frustrating and disheartening, borderline insulting. 
Uh, in fact, it was funny because we, they'd sent an email and I'd read it. And at first they said returnability. I'm like, this is great. This is exactly what I'm asking for. Yeah. Oh my God. Starting 2024. Christmas came early. Great. This is awesome. And then somebody called Santa a dipshit. And yeah. then immediately. And then I see the, the signer math and I'm like, ah, great. Um, and then five minutes later, there was a correction email. I'm like, okay, great. They realized that this is, uh, this can't be what they meant to do. Yeah. Because this is asking us to take more of a risk than we normally would instead of trying to mitigate our risk. Uh, and then it was like, no, no, we just forgot to say that, like, the incentive covers are now not incentive covers because, which is an, another little twist of the knife. And it, thankfully, we're not a store that does a lot with incentive covers. But it's like they realized, oh, a lot of people are going to hit incentives that they wouldn't normally because this is returnable. Well, we can't really support that. Right. So we have to make the incentive covers now open order covers. So now the the 142, the first chapter, the returnable one, uh, doesn't have any incentive covers. So there isn't a 1 in 25, a 1 in 50, because I guess they realized people would hit those too easily. Yeah. And now they can't. Like, wh why? Oh, my God. Insane. I mean, the, I guess the, the way of spinning that is, well, we said if you order... Any, any number of covers, this is what you can do to hit the threshold. And now we're giving you three extra covers to hit the threshold. It's like, they're all variant covers, though, man. It's still raw copies yeah. that I have to have in the store. Yeah. Like, we are well past the point of the market being like, well, people are probably going to buy five covers. No, they're definitely not. They're going to buy one or the other, and now you've got to get 150% of what you sold last time, which means 50% more than you ever sold. It's frustrating. No, oh, it's a Christmas gift. Yay. Coal in my stocking. Moving on to a topic we've discussed briefly before, but the interest that it has been shown from other retailers in the industry has made me want to talk about it again because I don't get it, and it's Ghost Machine. Yes. Ghost Machine is basically what I'm calling the Jeff Johns Geiger imprint from Image Comics. Yeah. It's the universe that has... Geiger, which is Jeff Johns and Gary Frank, and uh, Junkyard Joe, which is... Which know, is also Gary Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Junkyard Joe, which is like, you know, their... Uh, G.I. Robot. G.I. Robot character. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just a connected universe. And of Redcoat, which is Jeff Johns and Brian Hitch. And Rook, which is Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok. So more and more creators <coughs> are being added to this, like... Uh, Brad Meltzer, Peter Tomasi. Yeah. Uh, all names you know, except for the ones you don't. A mm -hmm. couple in there were like, okay. Uh, they just announced Ivan Race, who's uh, not even doing all of Beast World. Nope, skip it issue three. Yeah. So, it's an image imprint. Fine, there's a ton of those. They just announced yeah. a Rick Remender one. Giant Generator. You know, they already have... Skybound. <laughs> yeah, Skybound and... Um, Cow. Shadowline. Right. I mean, image originally was a bunch of little imprints. Yeah. Because every single guy, except for Eric Larson, was like... Cool, I'm going to start my own Marvel now. Yeah. So, the idea of Jeff Johns doing it, fine. Geiger does... Uh, for us? Yeah, I, we, we talked, I think, at length about Jeff Johns and sort of how the industry has sort of moved on past the point where Jeff Johns was held in, in a specifically high regard. Case in point, uh, next week there's a new issue of Justice Society when I'm like, oh, I get one of those, and I took it aside. Gal said, <laughs> you still read that? I was surprised. <laughs> I do. Uh, I I like Jeff Johns superhero books. You grew up on them. I did. Well, I wouldn't say I grew up on them. Like he you became a man from them. <laughs> I yes. They put hair on your chest. That was a uh, it's a romantic evening. It was a <laughs> romantic evening with uh, uh, an issue of JSA. No, I just mean he taught you like morality and right and wrong. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, I was. Uh, I, I think by the time that Jeff Johns was doing his DC stuff, I was already well out of high school by that point. Uh, so I did. Yeah, but you I, love his Flash stuff. I did. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed a lot of his his older work for sure. Um, like a lot of writers that I had a fondness for, I don't necessarily continue to have a fondness sure. for them Fun over the change. years. Right. Uh, I I firmly recall uh, reading a Chris Claremont Mark Silvestri Brood reprint. Uh, that came up from Marvel and having a flash of like, oh, Chris Claremont's no good. <laughs> and I grew up on, I, I did sure. grow up right. on Chris Claremont yeah. X-Men. Formative influence for me is, as far as superhero comics go. You read all yeah, his I was like, body and oh. soul. Yeah, it did. The totality of my comics reading experience. 
Uh, so uh, this is a moot point to a lot of people listening because the initial Ghost Machine one shot already FOC'd. Yeah. Uh, and there were, there's a ton of covers to it. There's, a, there's yeah, cause an it's, absurd number of covers because they want to showcase everybody who's a creative member of the yeah, team. Yeah, and like every character that's going to be in the, the book yeah. gets its own variant covers. So there's a bunch of like brand new, never be foreseen characters and concepts that are yeah. going to be getting their own cover. Which, spoiler, we did not order for the shelf because no one knows who these characters are. We don't know what the fan base is yet. Right. Uh, and moving forward, they're only going to do one cover per book. Okay. That's so, cool. fine. Right. Now... We're treating this as just a new image book, not a new savior to the comic industry. And it has that kind of gravita to other retailers. Like, there's people that are like, hey, I'm going all in on Ghost Machine and here's why. Yeah. Like, people that are betting big on it. I don't and see it. I mean, I, I don't see it either. Right, for us. right. The, the new Golden Age didn't do real good. Now, I, I appreciate the people being like, we need something and, and if we can make this a hit. And I would love it if that were a thing, but neither you nor I see it as that. No, I, I mean, we've, and, we've gotten behind plenty of books. And also, from the pre-orders that we've gotten, <laughs> you don't see it either, listener. No. So, I, I feel like the buzz that it has from other retailers means we may be caught short, and there's going to be... I'm sure there'll be the, a reprint. The handful of our speculators who are, who are, like, the people that are now going all into Beneath the Trees... Sure. Because but that's you know, a good book, man. Yeah, it is. It sure is. But I I don't mind constantly reordering new uh, printings of that because it is genuinely a good miniseries. I really like the first two issues. There was just I a large it's... number of people that are like, oh, I forgot to subscribe to that after right. number one. Like, yeah, well, so well we... those, those choices influence everything about our store. I mean, they do and they don't. Like, I would say ninety nine percent of the time they absolutely do, but there's like one percent of the time where we're like, no, this is going to be really good, and we're going to have to hand sell this. And we're okay doing that for certain yeah. books because yeah. we believe in them and, and because we know that if you get a chance to read it, you're going to feel like it's something you are happy to have. And that's one of the books that I emailed the creator ahead of time saying, hey, not only is this book amazing, but so is your first name. Yeah. Um, was the first name Dal? Is that why? It was Santa. Oh. Um, like, Too late to suck up. Yeah. He, he knows I'm lying now. He does. That's another strike against me. Once again, he sees The dude's name is Patrick. Of course it's Patrick. Oh, my God. Um, from the Chicago Bears. Uh, the, um, <laughs> it's time to stand up. I'm, I got almost <laughs> there. Um, like, It's Jeff, for me, was a book that I, I knew that a lot of people didn't necessarily know about. But I would read the Marvel Digital Limited stuff, and I'm like, we have to have a lot of copies of this. And so we ordered a lot. And we ordered a lot of the second print, a lot of the third print, a lot of the second issue. Um even though we didn't necessarily have a lot of subscribers because yeah. I knew that it was a thing that most people would need to be told about. Yeah. They need to see it on the shelves. And Ghost Machine is not a book where I feel like... It's coming from nowhere. It's not. It's not coming yeah, from like, nowhere. I, I, You've had a couple of years of Geiger to figure out what this world it's is. It's a Jeff Johns comic from Image, and I feel like people have told us what they think of that. That was a brief four-way... Four, four I beg your pardon? <laughs> Into... <laughs> there's more than four <laughs> Ghost Machine people, so... But I guess it's just four at a time. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, uh, I believe you'd call it a 4G. <laughs> you mean like 5G? Like w <laughs> yes, DC's... Exactly. Exa yeah. Not Forza. That's a comic uh, <laughs> A couple of years ago, we wound up recording a podcast on Christmas Day. And what we did during that episode... I mean, I, I don't need to tell you, Dal. You remember. You were there. Oh, my God. I, I wrote the show notes. Yeah. We... You've never written a show note. Uh, we opened our Christmas gifts. On the podcast. Yes. Well, it's not Christmas yet. No. In fact, there are uh, three or four days before Christmas yet. But we've been uh, very fortunate to have gotten some things from some um, customers. Um, subscribers, actually. All subscribers ahead of time. And we don't ever expect gifts from people. No. We give gifts. We give gifts to... People that we work uh, within the industry, you know, uh, we talked about this, I think, last week before, UPS drivers and FedEx drivers and um, mail personnel and... Yeah, like, uh, like service professionals, yeah, basically, the, is who you normally get people at uh, the warehouse where I get the books. And we send Christmas cards to people we do business with, like our insurance agent or your cleaners mm -hmm. or... 
um, you know, that, our, that our capacity. Neighbors. Yeah, our neighbors, a FedEx office, uh -huh. our bank. Yeah. You know, just, just to say, like, hey, you know, thanks for working with us this sure. year. Um, but we don't expect to get things from people because you give us money all year long. Yeah. And that's the most important gift. So please keep giving. Yeah, them. I mean, as, as long as you pick up your books on a regular basis, that is the only yeah. gift I need for the entire year. Uh, however, we do have a small stack of things here, and I thought it might be festive and holiday-like to open some of them. Sure. We don't need to go into, uh, we don't need to name people or specifics, Correct. but uh, here you go. Here is a card for you to open. I'm giving you the red one because you're in a red shirt. Yes. I dress for the podcast, Patrick. I dress as a guy who just saw the Iron Claw. Claw. Uh, uh, it's, it's this is this is yes. I, I'm sorry. I was taking it all in. Uh, it's a Spider-Man card. It says deck the walls. Look inside for some awesome stickers. And there are awesome stickers inside. <laughs> nice. Uh, thank you for being the best store and group of people in any universe. Have a happy holiday. Thank you, Mike. Ah. Uh, so the the front says deck the walls, and it's Spidey in a uh, a Santa hat, uh, swinging on a group of uh, Christmas lights. Inside nice. it says, and let your spidey sense lead you into an amazing Christmas. And there are stickers. And stickers. And a uh, Baskin-Robbins gift card. Thank you so much. That is where uh, Wednesday breakfast usually finds itself. Yeah. Is uh, not a Baskin-Robbins at Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Which has a Baskin-Robbins inside. Yes. Yes. All right. Next card. Uh, this is more... Oh, my goodness. This is a, uh, Elaborate. a, a family photo one, but it's a fold-out. I've never seen a family fold-out... The car has three panels. Wow. And, of course, it has their dog, which uh -huh. is amazing. Merriest Christmas Wishes. This is uh, uh, sending warm wishes of love and joy to you. It's just to me, not to you. I'm oh, sorry. okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear yeah. you getting warm wishes. Uh, from, well, honestly, one of our favorite families who shops with us. So, thank you, Michael. And thank you for the uh, Fandango. Fandango gift card. <laughs> Fantastic. Already oh, the man. hall. Does that mean we have to use it to go see Aquaman now? Maybe. Oh, yeah. man. Sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we get more uh, audio parts of this podcast because they are uh, wrapped things. Now, these are all wrapped, and they just say uh, two challengers from Ben. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to each do two. Okay. Tim Tams. Oh my god, I love Tim Tams. Oh, I'm sorry, Patrick. This is for oh, me. You should oh, have what, taken this one. What flavor, Dal? What flavor, Tim Tams? Original? Uh, true story. When uh, the very first international sales battle, when we were trying to decide on what the... Prize should be? Yeah, the, the, the country-specific prize should be. Because you're thinking about it in terms of like when two mayors of Super exactly. Bowl towns... Like, we'll give you our chili, and you'll give us your pizza cheesesteaks or yeah. whatever. Uh, Mitchell said, we can send you Tim Tams. And I said, no, man, we can get Tim Tams here. <laughs> Chicago. And, and it's true. It's a major hub. Uh, Target carries Tim Tams. Jewel carries Tim Tams. Uh, do you want to tell people what Tim Tams are, just in case? Tim Tams are an irresistible chocolatey happiness in a biscuit. They're Australia's right that. favorite biscuits. Yeah, They there couldn't you go. put that if it's not true. All right. There is no substitute for quality. Nice. Challengers has not found that to be the case. Ooh, I've never seen these before. These are Twix Caramel Center Chocolate Chip Cookies. Whoa. They're chocolate chip cookies stuffed with caramel inside. Also, Caramel Center is yeah. spelled in a European yeah, way. Yeah, and you can tell by this label that I'm putting my glasses on for uh -oh. that this is definitely a, a foreign and overseas because these are, I, I'm sorry, I call these cookies. These are not cookies. These they're, are biscuits. They're chips these are they're crisps quick soft center <laughs> biscuits so that means that these are definitely european fantastic can i borrow that uh yeah caramel centered chocolate chip biscuits all right we got two more which also, which direction you're in here like, it feels like there's like four all right well since biscuits. you're not paying attention you have I'll, to get this one all right i'll take this one i was gonna let dal choose between the small one or the bigger one and he was too busy uh, drooling over those... Chiding the the bizarre surfing size of the Twix <laughs> Caramel Centers. Uh, I think it's a sandwich. It looks like, <laughs> it's like a sub. Is this a sub from sandwich? It's, uh, no, it's, it's been a, sitting in a bag. It's a, it's a <laughs> Chipotle burrito that's dried out. It's completely dried out. 
uncured North Beach pepperoni. I was going to make a joke that it was a, a meat log. I can't smell anything. My nose is completely fucked oh, up. Oh, fantastic. Like pepperoni is right up my alley, man. Love it. Natural, made of natural smoke flavored. Let's see if there's anything that, uh, wow, that is small type. No, oh, it's good until July. It won't last that long. It definitely won't, but I'm trying to <laughs> figure out. Well, it's a distributed from um, Brisbane, California. I'm trying to decide if, uh, where it's I'm going. sorry, Brisbane, California? Yeah. Not Australia? Correct. Okay. Different Brisbane. Well, a hey, Brisbane. I mean, <laughs> different than we not, not. Okay. Not different. It's theirs. <laughs> Uh, all right, and uh, one more, which is uh, shoebox size. One single shoe oh for all of Challengers oh, to wear. Wow. Uh, I'm going to pass this over to you to finish opening. <laughs> what in the world? It's a Hello Kitty and Friends. Well, let, I'm sorry, let me put the crinkly paper away first. Hello Kitty and Friends variety noodle box. <laughs> Ten packs of noodles. It looks like it's a blind box for ramen. I mean, maybe. I'm try and open this. And is it taped? Uh, yes, you are. Right. Try and get the tape off without destroying the decorative Sanrio box. There's definitely like a little chart on the side of all the characters. Uh, no, it is not blind bag. Oh, okay. It is ten packs of, of identical dry noodles. Oh, wow, yeah. It, it is ramen. It is... Uh... Wow, look at that. Uh, Hello Kitty, Kuropi, My Melody, Bats Maru, Tuxedo Sam, Chuckle Cat, Pom Pom Purin, and, and Cinema Roll. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, oh my gosh. 18 hour air dried process, and it's all plant based protein. Ooh. That is excellent. Five, oh, I'm sorry. So, five packs of mandarin style noodles with sesame paste sauce okay five packs of mandarin style noodles with original soy sauce wow so there are different two different varieties neat um and i honestly god cannot tell them apart i don't know if they say that maybe they do say them uh maybe look look, look 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 at the front of the packages are they different yeah no, no the one you're holding hold that one. Oh, okay i thought you had a different one okay uh, anyway, uh, that's amazing. Ben, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you, Ben. After, uh, all these years of Dal refusing to pronounce your name correctly, you, you do this wonderful... Uh, I get it wonderful. exactly right. I get it perfect. I'm taking those back. <laughs> I'm, we're, Ben, I'm sorry, we're just gonna give you this back completely. Uh, I think, that, I think you're penalizing me, and I won't be allowed to have any, uh, Hello Kitty Sanrio noodles. Uh, because I pronounce Ben's name too correctly. I see the soy sauce has 20 less calories than the sesame paste sauce. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, thank you, Mike, Mike, and Ben. Thank you, guys. And thank you for everybody for just being part of the store, whether you are someone who shops with us weekly, monthly, annually Your sales coming up <laughs> or if you uh if you're just a listener uh thanks for well i'll save all that for next year next next year next week's year end recap. podcast yes yeah. thanks for listening keep reading comics and merry, merry christmas. christmas this has been contest of challengers thanks for listening keep reading comics challengers is located at 1845 northwestern avenue in the bucktown neighborhood of chicago 773-278-0155 Keep up to date with new releases and events at challengerscomics.com and help fund this podcast at patreon.com slash challengers.